what's going on everyone it's Tokyo I'm back with a brand new video as we are here with our week one MPL division two matchup against the Virginia Volcaronas coached by absolute destruction really cool guy I'll leave a link in the description we got a quality battle and I definitely hope we can get a rematch maybe in playoffs or just later in the season as uh, I think he's someone who will have a very solid season so um, shout outs to him um, let's just uh, let's hop right into the uh, the team and everything and exactly what I was thinking going into the matchup um, and I was looking at my phone because I, I have his uh, I have the Google document with everyone's entirely drafted team on there I don't remember it by heart so sorry about that but really quickly I just want to go over why there hasn't been a video on the channel the past three days I think it has been three days and that's because my I've been experiencing very bad face cam issues that kind of uh, were really starting to irritate me on top of me just uh, um, dealing with a little bit of uh, tilting and all that with VGC that uh, was really dampening my mood and then on top of that I started to deal with these technical issues with my face cam and I came to the conclusion or I came to the realization that it was actually my USB extender that was um, causing this um, uh, I thought I just I went to Staples bought a USB, uh, USB extender when I realized that I needed more uh, USB ports to have everything I need when like my capture card my keyboard and mouse take up two of the USB ports, my capture card takes up another, and then my face cam and mic, they, there's only four in total. Obviously that's five that I needed, so I bought a USB, a USB extender so it can go in that fourth slot and then two can go in the USB extender. Unfortunately for me though, it's having a lot of issues right now and it's uh it's not working the way I would like to. I'm thinking I can just not have my mouse plugged in when I am uh, using my capture card and then when I'm not using my capture card like right now, I can just not have that plugged in. But uh, overall, that's a little um, concerning, and I guess I might end up buying another one, but that's not ideal considering that um, I, I went out of my way and already bought one, and I wouldn't know where to go to get one that's more reliable. So I went to Staples, thought I bought, bought a reliable one, but it's having a lot of issues, and now and I, I've came to the realization now that it's, it is the USB extender that's causing the issue. So maybe I... Uh, maybe it's just a brand, um, Avita. I think that's the name of it. Maybe Avita is not the brand, so I guess don't buy Avita uh, USB extenders because I'm having lots of troubles with it. Anyways, though, uh, let's just uh, let's focus on what we have at hand, and that is this matchup against Absolute Destruction. The coach of the Virginia Volcaronas. His entire team is Necrozma, Landris I, Rotom Wash, Infernape, Mega Agron, Wismacot, Dragalgy, Blastoids, Levani uh glaceon and vile plume so the ones i was most concerned going with uh the pokemon i was most concerned with going into this matchup were necrozma landers i rodan wash and fernape and dragalgy um just uh, some very solid pokemon there uh rodan has a very solid matchup on my team it can volt switch off pretty practically anything and what it can't volt switch off of cannot oko it and definitely doesn't want to take a hydro pump like landers uh i mean landers uh therian so uh definitely uh rodan was pretty scary Necrozma too, especially because I'm just not that familiar with it. Kind of only know the Calm Mind, uh, Moonlight, and just uh, the uh, Psychic Stab and the Dark uh, Coverage mo uh, set. Kind of the only one I'm really familiar with. So not a Pokemon I was too uh, familiar with. So that also made me a little concerned, especially because um, I have a good amount of U-turn Pokemon too. And I was afraid of a Weakness Policy set combined with its ability in like Prison Armor. I think it's called Prison Armor. But combined with its ability where it only takes three-fourths damage from super effective hits. I thought there was a, a solid chance that it might be a Weakness Policy to bank on me going for a U-turn and him just switching in on it. And then uh, maybe going for an Automize or a Tata I think it I think it definitely does get autonomized and then uh, just kind of trying to sweep through my team from there So I was a little concerning too um, uh, Going into the game though, let's just uh, talk about my sets first and foremost I saw the usefulness of Reuniclus in this one I was really scared of Landris I as everyone who plays in this draft league format should be considering that it's a uh, very it's uh, one of the most solid and consistent mixed attackers you will find and uh, um, I was uh, very concerned with Earth Powers just running through my team, as well as it um, going for Hidden Power Ice on Landorus, which it doesn't hit with that, and then maybe going for a Psychic on Weezing, which it doesn't hit with that. But uh, yeah, very scary. So I EV'd my Reuniclus to be 3 hit KO'd by a Timid Landorus Eyes um, Earth Power. It took 144 EVs in defense. That allows me to be 3 hit KO'd by the Timid One's Earth Power. And uh, if it's modest, there's like a 2% chance that I'm 2 hit KO'd, so nothing too concerning. Uh, 
from there, um, I also put 114 in defense with a bold nature so that I can also take the knockoff and the U-turn pretty well if they are brought on Lander's Eye. I thought it'd definitely be a mixed set. And um, uh, yeah, Reno Close was to, uh, as a backup answer to Lander's Eye, my main answer to switch into it was Komala as I thought uh, Komala with uh, just uh, heavily specially invested but uh, just with the bulk it needed could also take it on, uh, could mainly take it on decently well. Uh, so um, I, I, that's what Komala was mainly for was it was for a little bit more too, also to take on the Rotom So I didn't have anything else that really wanted to take on Rotom especially if Rotom was on like Thunder Wave and will o uh, Well, I guess those didn't matter because of the fact I ended up bringing Magic Guard Reuniclus And I was really contemplating if I wanted to bring that or not But uh, I decided to bring it because of the fact that I went uh, heavy on hazards with Stealth Talks on uh, Lando and uh, Toxic Spice on Weezing and I knew I was definitely going to go for Toxic Spites um, due to the fact that my opponent only has Blastoids as a uh, uh, hazard removal so I thought hazards would be a definitely solid uh, solid thing to bring and uh, because of that I saw that my opponent might bring Blastoids and I thought what can Blastoids do to Reuniclus it can only Toxic it that's all it's going to do that even matters or get a Scald Burn so I decided that bringing Magic Guard, uh, Magic Guard Reuniclus especially with the fact that uh, Thunder Wave Rotom, um, um, Thunder Wave Mega Aggron, just a few things could uh, status Reuniclus to make it not as effective at uh, just recovering off damage and getting going up for more, going for more calm lines as it usually is. So I decided that I would focus on, uh, um, I'd focus on stopping those hazards by going Magic Guard over Regenerator. That does end up mattering a little bit later on in the game. I'll um, uh, let you, I'll uh, make sure to highlight that a little bit later. But yeah, Reuniclus was just a standard uh, recovery uh, or recover, call mine, psychic, shadow ball Reuniclus. So um, I thought that had a solid matchup. It could switch into the uh, Necrozma if it didn't have uh, if it didn't have crazy coverage. It was able to uh, take the Dark Pulse. I can't remember the exact cal calc, but it definitely took Dark Pulse well enough. Even with a 252 modest Necrozma, it took the Dark Pulse from that extremely well. So it could switch into Necrozma as long as uh, Infernape wasn't a punishment. Infernape, it could uh, definitely take on Infernape and switch into it whenever too. Um, U turn wouldn't do enough damage to make uh, to alarm me in any way uh rotom wash uh takes on the rotom wash pretty well as long as it's not uh i guess thunder wave is just still annoying but could take on rotom wash really well so i, I saw that arena Clis could do a lot for our team and that is why arena Clis the first pokemon i added moving right along though then i went with a scarf lander Starion. the reason i went with scarf lander Starion was because landers didn't outspeed um landers uh landers eye or infernape and i wanted to have a Pokemon that I knew could outspeed. That'd be the fastest thing as long as my opponent didn't bring any Scarfers. I knew there was a slight chance, but Scarfing didn't seem as good for his team as it did for mine. So um, I wanted something as a backup answer so that um, I had a faster Pokemon to uh, hit some of these threats once everything was worn down. And maybe I could just Scarf EQ his team away after Rotom and Landers I were gone. Um, Unfortunately, uh, well, not unfortunately, but uh, I went with a Scarf uh, Landorus. Uh, it's just Earthquake, U-Turn, Knockoff, and Stealth Rocks. Um, a little bit of bluffing the Scarf with the uh, Stealth Rocks, so that my opponent maybe doesn't think I'm Scarf since I do uh, since I do have Stealth Rocks. So uh, just a little bit of mind games uh, there. Just a pretty standard, uh, fully adamant 252 uh, Landorus Darien. Um, because Infernape is uh, Absol's or Absolute Destruction's uh, fastest Pokemon, I didn't have to invest much of any into uh, speed, so I was able to throw a lot more EVs into bulk, which was really nice too, to make me less worry of um, HP Ices. I think I could live one from Inferni or, or Lander, so I was one of those two I could live one from with the investment I have, so not bad there. Uh, then I, uh, I saw that my opponent had three Pokemon that could possibly have Stealth Rocks in Mega Aggron, Infernape, and Lander's Eye. I knew there was no way he wouldn't want to bring Land uh, Mega Aggron and bring Stealth Rocks on it. I saw that I'm coming from a mile away. So I decided I'd definitely bring my Rapid Spinners. I wanted to keep my hazards up definitely. So that was just more reason not to bring Scissor and Tapu Fini. As well as them have Defog and that get rid of my hazards just to get rid of my opponent's hazards, which I definitely didn't want to do. So I um, uh, really wanted to bring my Rapid Spinner in this one and I brought Komala. It's just rapid spin, U-turn, uh, wish and protect. So it's my wish passer, and it was my answer to like Rotom Wash, a reliable switch in a Rotom Wash. Uh, also, just um, protect a scout. I thought there's a chance that it is a Z move Dragalge or a um, 
or a specs Dragalge would be brought. So I definitely like to protect on it to maybe scout for that Z move or scout for uh, specs Dragalge. So um, unfortunately, you can see right now that there's no Dragalge, but I was definitely concerned about it and definitely wanted to have a game plan for it. Uh, and I like the slow U turn because it is slower than Rotom Wash's Bolt Switch. So um, I can protect see if it goes for volt switch and once i see that it is going for volt switch i can just u-turn out of there and get into something after rotom switches into something else so i like that a lot um, there is like an airplane going over my house i live right next to the airport so sorry if you guys are hearing that uh, moving right along though we do have Dragonite, and uh, the reason I decided to bring Dragonite was because I thought after setup it could kind of sweep through my opponent's team especially if i could keep its multi-skill um enacted um, into the late game. I didn't bring extreme speed though because I thought the other coverage options were a little better and after it's considering my opponent's team really isn't that fast and I didn't think he'd bring a scarf or after one dragon dance I was able um, I ran enough uh, speed investment to be able to outspeed his entire team after one dragon dance and we're just running um, a uh, Dragon Claw, Earthquake, and Ice Punch set. So um, I was excited to um, try to get that sweep with Dragonite and see if we can uh, have that go pretty well. And then uh, moving right along now, uh, Sneasel was next. Um, I really didn't like a lot of other uh, other of my Pokemon's options. Um, I didn't like their matchup in this one. Really didn't like Tapu Fini's matchup. That it just baited in Rotom and uh, the Dragalge every time it came in as it doesn't get coverage to hit either of those hard enough for my liking. So um, I didn't like Tapu Fini in this one. And then Scissor thought with Infernape, with Necrozma easily being able to run HP Fire with uh, Rotom easy being able to run HP fire with Landers I easily being able to run HP fire and with the uh, scissor not being able to do much damage to uh, Rotom or Mega Agron back and uh, with the threat of Dragalge 2 which it can't do much to um, either um, I thought scissor had a really poor matchup in this one so um Due to a few of my Pokemon have really bad matchups, Sneasel came about. I'm not mad about bringing Sneasel, but I, I, I'm not the happiest as I didn't think it had an overwhelmingly good matchup. But it did give me a stab, uh, super effective move on Necrozma, which was, uh, which definitely was a little bit better than what I had at that point, as I was definitely really um, scared, like I said, of that weakness policy set. So that uh, made things a little bit more comforting. Um, obviously, um, uh, what is it? Priority and ice shard, t ice shard to stop a Landers ice sweep is also really nice. So I appreciated having that. And then it's dual stab. Um, it's able to hit a lot of things pretty hard and knock off items and stuff. Uh, just uh, Infernape resists both of those. So that's one thing I didn't like at all. Moving right along, and our last Pokemon is Weezing, and uh, Weezing just like the last one i was looking at my other options and there just wasn't anything that really had a good matchup so wheezing came i'm not mad at all about bringing wheezing those i did start to see what exactly could do in this matchup and uh one obviously is being uh the toxic spikes i really want it uh hazards as i stated blastoids being the only hazard remover just seemed really bad and i didn't think blastoids had the best matchup uh overall either so it doesn't surprise me that blastoids wasn't brought but um uh, I really want to have those toxic spikes, so it's definitely going to have toxic spikes. But then I went for a kind of counter set to Agron, as I really wanted to make sure that uh, t uh, Stealth Rocks didn't go up on my end. So I went with uh, Taunt, Flamethrower, Pain Split, and Toxic Spikes. Um, I do outspeed Mega Agron, and I even ran, I ran just four in speed just in case uh, Agron tried to speed creep me. Um, I could still outspeed it, and uh, yeah, just a uh, Taunt, Flamethrower to hit. Uh, uh, Mega Agron and maybe even Glaceon if it's brought. Definitely didn't expect it though, so I'm not gonna say that's uh, was my game plan. And uh, yeah, just uh, Toxic Spikes definitely for the hazard. It makes sense though. And now I'm realizing with uh, the fact that I did have three flying types and the reason why uh, Glaceon would be brought though. Uh, someone did drop Mind Chow though, and I think I definitely will be uh, dropping Halucha and scooping up Mind Chow, which I think will definitely give my team a little bit more versatility, especially when it comes to team building. So that's something I'm definitely looking forward to. Um, unfortunately, I didn't say that before week one, uh, and I, it was in my mind as soon as the transactions were, were made. So I probably won't have mine shout till week three, but that's fine. We'll uh, we can definitely play with what we have until then. But yeah, um, I also saw that I didn't really have a solid defensive wall. Um, Uniclus, um, it's decent. I'm not. I'm running 114. Or yeah, I think 114 and a bold nature. So that's decent, but nothing like crazy. And uh, I really just wanted a solid defensive wall, and that's what uh, Weezing also provided me, other than just like kind of countering Mega Agron and setting up spikes. So I was excited for that. Um, I, 
we get into the team preview and I see that there's no Jigalji, so I start to feel pretty uh, solid about uh, my chances in this one as Jigalji was really scary, especially because the Z move and acid downpour would do so much to everything with that adaptability coming off of Jigalji's uh, solid special attack stat. So I was uh, afraid of that. Thankfully, it wasn't brought. So I um, just decide that uh, I click Weezing right away. Um, uh, Weezing also, that's uh, that's exactly what Weezing brought for me too, was that I didn't like any of my lead options. Uh, I didn't like Scarf Landers as a lead just in case Infernape was led and it just went for an HP Ice and it was Scarf also. That was kind of concerning for me. And then also if Rotom was just led, um, none of my moves are going to Oko Rotom and it can just go for a Hydro Pump and depending on investment, Oko me. So there's a, a good reason why um, I didn't really like any of my lead options. So um, uh, Weezing provided a, a more safer lead option for me. This isn't mine, the Rotom, Mega Aggron, or the Infernape lead. So I just go right into uh, Weezing to start this out. My opponent does go into their Mojo Jojo in their Infernape. Very solid nickname. I, I approve Powerpuff Girls were a huge part of my childhood. They just go for a fake out though, so not bad. And they reveal that their life orb early on, so that's vital information for us. They do just go for a U-turn, as I just go for toxic spikes both times. Um, like I said, I definitely want to get toxic spikes up. That's a huge reason why Weezing was brought, so I am able to get the toxic spikes up. But here, quickly, the game goes array. And um, this is just because of me, or uh, not a raid, the game just uh, starts to uh, take a turn that I didn't see coming at all. And uh, in the league format, when you really doesn't, when you really don't see something coming, um, it usually is bad. <laughs> usually bad things are, are going to happen. And that's exactly what has here, what happens here, is I completely looked over a move on Rotom, and I definitely didn't think a trick would happen. I didn't think it would be Scarf, I didn't think it would have trick just a really unfortunate uh, situation and then as the game progressed I wasn't even thinking about the fact that it could trick again because of the fact it does have that uh, um, toxic orb now and it definitely doesn't want to keep that toxic orb considering that that's just going to lower your health if you're not actually a poison type Pokemon and uh, oh not toxic orb uh, black sludge black sludge is just going to lower your health if you're not a poison type Pokemon so definitely didn't want that black sludge to uh, stay on it and I wasn't thinking about that either I just went for a plane split because I thought Rotom might go for a hydro pump or whatever I just wanted to scout what it would go for um, but it ended up tricking me which uh, now I'm tricked uh, while well, now I'm locked into choice scarf uh, pain sweat which is obviously really bad so uh yeah this is uh this uh really made wheezing a lot less effective and it was just such a solid uh bring by uh absolute destruction just a very solid uh oh god okay we're back we're back but yeah just a very solid bring on his part um uh here though i just go into komala's it's uh my dedic one of my uh my main answer to the rotom is it's uh fully invested in special defense and then 252 and uh hp to be to take special hits as, as best as possible unfortunately though i do get crit by thunderbolt and this definitely becomes an issue in the fact that uh um, Komala needed to stay at a solid health for me in this one as Komala was a uh, Pokemon that I was relying on heavily to take very powerful special attacks and just to deal with Rotom in general so uh, that early crit actually really matters uh, especially on top of Rotom having trick and me not thinking that it might just trick again right here and uh, yeah I just uh, I trick just caught me so off guard and it just destroyed my walls honestly as a the black sludge does a little bit of damage I got a little bit of leftovers recovery back and then that's when that's when my opponent goes for the trick and I could have easily predicted that and just went back into wheezing but like I said I wasn't thinking of the fact that he would likely just trick again I was so focused on the fact that I just got crit and all my attention was there so I just wanted to go for a wish at this point but unfortunately uh, we do get tricked the black sludge onto our Komala which is going to be really really bad as the game starts to progress as we're just losing health now instead of having the reliable reliable leftovers recovery I do go for a protect to see if my opponent was going to go for the volt switch um, now they have our leftovers, so Rotom's looking really nice, and it's already done so much work to my team. Uh, now that I know he's going for Volt Switch, though, I am just going to U-turn out so I could have the switch, uh, so I could be, uh, have the main switch initiative, so I could have the momentum. My opponent does go into Mega Aggron, so I use that to just go back into my uh, Weezing. As he goes into his Necrozma on my Weezing, and I just go for a taunt. I wanted to taunt the Mega Aggron to make sure it wasn't able to uh, go for Stealth Rocks, because I know that's exactly what he wants to do with his Mega Aggron. And also, I wasn't uh, really mad about taunting the Necrozma due to the fact that I could um, 
I could uh, stop it from going for Moonlight Recovery on, on top of the poison damage, starting to really whack up on it. So from there, I just go right into Reuniclus to see if he has any coverage for it. He just goes for a Hidden Power, and I'm not sure I have the slightest clue as to what Hidden Power that likely was. Uh, Reuniclus didn't resist it, so definitely was a Hidden Power fighting for Komala or something. Uh, maybe he was ex he uh, ran Hidden Power Fire for my... Um, or, I mean, Hidden Power Ice for Dragonite and Landorus, or, and like just uh, the fact that I have three flying types in general, but uh, I don't see why I would have went into any of my uh, uh, my Ice Week Pokemon right there. I, I don't see any reason why I would have done that. So, interesting play there enough, but I, it allows me to get a free, um, pretty much a free switch in into Reuniclus and get more toxic damage off on his uh, Necrozma. Here I just go for a... Uh, Call mind. Um, I would have loved to have stayed in here. I wish I really did. But like I said, um, I needed to scout if uh, this uh, Infernape was going to be punishment. I guess it was a little, a little bit of over, over thinking a little too highly of my opponent because of the fact that and it's not a knock to absolute destruction at all but I think punishment is a move that was just recently uh, given to Infernape in Generation Seven, and uh, um, I d highly doubt that he would have saw that um, punishment does 60 damage but then plus 20 for um every um for every stage of um what is it called for every stage of call mind or or boost i could not think of the word boost for every stage of boost that your pokemon has punishment does 20 more damage and it's already a dark time move that already does 60 so i was a little afraid of that so i decided to just go right into my lander so now that i know that this is life orb and i can outspeed it and just go for a uh um, just go for a earthquake. So that is what I do. I know that it might just you turn off of me though, and just you turn out on your Uniclus. It does just go for a fake out though, which is fine. That's perfectly fine. Um, here I'm thinking that it might stay in though, but at the same time I know that it likely will not stay in since it's minus one, and that I kind of have a hunch that it's not um, hidden power ice. So I just go for the stealth rocks here. Like um, like I said, I wanted to get hazards up. He doesn't have a hazard remover, so I really need this, especially now that both of my walls are kind of like going to be way less effective in this one so i really need to get my stealth tax up which is what i go for now here though i need to switch out um i didn't really know anything to go into i knew a hydro pump was likely going coming my way didn't really want to uh, go back into reuniclus or anything uh, i wanted to see if komala can maybe tank that unfortunately i put to that 12 percent so now i just protect to uh to kind of like wait out the inevitable but uh black sludge damage is actually just going to take me out here I think that kill goes to Reuniclus, but I'm not sure. So, uh, commissioners, if you could let us know who exactly gets that kill. Uh, here, though, I do finally go out into Reuniclus. And uh, I think I just go for a Calm Mind. Not 100% sure, though. I think I do. Yeah, I do just go for a Calm Mind. And here's where the, the here's where I think the battle was kind of decided. And uh, like I said, I have this EV to uh, be 3 hit KO'd by Earth Power. And I have 114 in defense and a bold nature. So I'm thinking I can take knockoff and uh, U-turn both really well. So I'm not really concerned about this matchup. So I'm thinking, yeah, I could just stay in here. Uh, as my opponent goes for a knockoff. And that takes me down all the way to 1%. And I didn't, I should have definitely ran the calc here. Um, I don't, um, it was kind of late. And I don't know, I guess I wasn't really in the uh, very, very, I guess I wasn't really, really in the battling move as to why I didn't just go and run a calc on this. But it turns out that that was a fully adamant Landorus-sized knockoff on my uh, arena Clist. It actually has no special attacks at all. This is a fully, uh, fully um, attack invested uh, Landorus eye. After the match, my opponent let me know that he really dislikes uh, mixed Pokemon and he especially really dislikes mixed Landorus eye. And, uh... Even though that's easily the best set on Lander side, in my opinion, he did not bring that. He brought a fully physical one, and this kind of really changed the tide of the game. Is This is my last and only, like, not only my wall, but also a sweeper in a sense that if I could set up enough calm lines, I would have been able to uh, kind of sweep through his team. As long as this Lander side wasn't fully physical, which it randomly turned out to be. And uh, I didn't see this coming from a mile away, and I definitely should have ran this calc. But at this point, I'm not regenerator, so I'm not going to be able to get enough health back to be able to recover at any point. Um, there's there's no point I'm going to be able to recover off that uh, the fact that I'm at one percent now so I kind of have to sack my Reuniclus here which is really unfortunate and uh, uh, yeah it's just uh, not the not the brightest on my part I do go for a recover though um, but unfortunately he goes for a U-turn which does take me out so uh, yeah I didn't see fully physical lander side coming that was a roll but it's fine that uh, that took me out I didn't see physical lander side coming so uh, just a interesting set by my opponents 
on my opponent's part that ended up working out for him. I go into my sneeze on his uh, um, Necrozma uh, switch in after the U-turn. Um, that allows me to get a KO on Necrozma with my sneeze uh, He does go into aggro on though. At this point, I'm like really down and I need to start making plays. Um, I can't really do anything about that though. I didn't bring Taunt on my sneeze which I maybe could should have considered, but I had Swords Dance instead uh, due to the fact that I thought I could maybe make something switch out and maybe just start to run through a few things considering that sneeze is faster than uh, his entire team. But... Um, um, unfortunately though, uh, since I didn't have taunt, I was uh, forced to switch out on Agron because uh, um, Sneasel couldn't do anything to that. And uh, yeah, just really unfortunate. So then I switched into Lander's Therian after he gets his rocks up. And now I don't have my only uh, uh, hazard remover in Komala. So now rocks are here to stay, which is really unfortunate for Sneasel and Dragonite, especially Dragonite though. I really want to keep his multi-scale enacted. So uh, maybe Glaceon could uh, Ice Shard or do whatever into the Dragonite slot. I live that and I become uh, much faster. So, uh, oh, well, I get my boost from the weakness policy. So that was just uh, an unfortunate situation there i had to let rocks go up uh, uh he does switch in his rotom after i go for a knockoff which i have to allow happen and then a hydro pump takes my uh wheezing down to a health where it's easily taken out by a thunderbolt so not we're definitely not in the best position here though i just go into dragonite and i decide that it is time even if the volt switch does go off on my dragonite it is time to just go for a dragon dance and try to do what i can with this pokemon Unfortunately, unfortunately, though, I am in a Ice Shard Glaceon range, though, so, um, well, after this fake out, I am now, so, um, even fake out was a solid bring on, um, Absolute Destruction's out part, as, uh, yeah, now I am in Ice Shard range, and I will not be able to sweep, and Dragonite really doesn't want to be brought in on another, uh, rocks, so I saw no reason to go for, to try to switch out and play around that, so I do allow Ice Shard to just take me out. And then I just go into Sneasel. As um, I definitely see the Mega Aggron switch in coming. Not much I can do about that at this point. Or or the Rotom. I just go for knockoff either way. Uh, Rotom comes in. Sneasel gets another kill. So we at least bring the differential down though. But with Ice Shard in the back and with this uh, Mega Aggron, um, it's pretty obvious. I tried to switch into Landris, but I was pretty sure that he had Ice Punch on this. Uh, on this Mega Aggron, which my opponent ends up do does have any, and even at not minus one, that will take out Landorus. So um, yeah, just switch right back into uh, Sneasel, and I won't be able to take out this Aggron. Just go for a knockoff, get some damage off, and uh, we'll take a 3-0 loss to the Virginia Volcaronas, coached by Absolute Destruction. So GG's to him. He really threw me off with some of those sets. Um, First and foremost, I didn't think Glaceon would be brought, so I thought there was, even if my, even if multi-scale was broken, I thought there was a solid chance I could maybe still sweep through my opponent's team, uh, due to the fact that there wouldn't have been any priority to take out Dragonite, and I had solid coverage for his entire team, especially once, uh, stuff was weakened. I don't think any one move, oh, well, an Ice Punch from Mega Aggron would have actually took me out, and I, at plus one, wouldn't have taken out, uh, Mega Aggron at the health it was at, so still not the best, still just, I was not in the best position at that point. Uh, mainly just to trick on Rotom and just destroyed both my walls and uh, Weezing and Komala. I should have definitely uh, switched back into Komala when the first um, when the first uh, trick went my way. I sort of switched back in Komala and got that uh, Black Sludge back on my Weezing. Fortunately though, I got crit and all my focus went on to being crit and I just wanted to go for a wish to get health back. So that was unfortunate. Um, and then just my opponent bringing a fully physical Landers eye was the icing on the cake as uh, I thought I had a solid answer to it or a decent answer to it in Reuniclus, but Reuniclus was actually a terrible answer uh, to it considering that it was uh, fully physical. So just a lot of sets that threw me off guard. Um, I'm glad that um, I'm glad this happened early though. I want to get the games where I, uh, things that I don't see coming at all or I don't see happening at all happen to me early on so that later on I, I'm more much more prepared for things like this. Um, I'm still I'm still not bad I'm not mad at the way I played. I just didn't see trick or any of that coming so I definitely need to do a little bit more research on what moves my opponent might bring to the game. Um, we did kind of, uh, I don't know, it was a little, it wasn't the most, uh, the most well-planned game, so I wasn't fully sure if, if it would even happen when it actually happened. I wasn't 100% sure it was going to happen as, uh, 
absolute destruction got off work a little bit later than I expected and uh, I thought there was a good chance he was just going to say can we play tomorrow so I didn't go crazy in depth with uh, searching up move sets which is bad on my part I should have definitely had that taken care of uh, a few days before um, um, before the match even came about but overall it was GG to him he uh, he just brought some very uncanny sets that definitely threw me off and uh, he earned this win so uh, GG man like I said hope we battle again maybe later in the season or in playoffs that'd be awesome uh, you, uh, I see you having a very solid season considering that you are someone who's willing to bring stuff like a fully physical Landorus and a, and the fact that you brought Glaceon was also really smart on your part. So I feel like he's going to have a solid season. So hopefully we could definitely get that rematch. I want revenge. This was fun though. And, uh, um, unfortunately we didn't get a, we didn't win our first game, but this is a very long season. We have a lot of time to, uh, uh, get ourselves back in that win column so thank you guys for watching this uh watching our first battle i hope you enjoyed definitely leave a like if you did subscribe to the channels to see to keep up with the npl division 2 and to see more battles like this i'm gonna get the heck out of here though guys once again i do apologize for the lack of content in general but um it was mainly because i was uh, uh i was just a little bit having a little bit of motivation issues just because i was tilting so bad with vgc and then also mainly just because of my face cam it was just really aggravating me and uh, when i get flustered i just really am not in the mood to make videos i don't think it's a smart thing to make videos when you're flustered so i apologize i'll see you guys in the next episode though for now though peace out have a good one everyone